effective turns or it is also uh, actual number of turns active number of turns and n is additional number of coils that are required say with respect to the kind of end condition of the spring that is assumed so it may be plain or it may be squared and ground so by referring a table number uh, 11.4 uh, page number 189 of your data and book you can assume the suitable value of n say usually it is assumed as Next, next comes the value of y. Y is the axial deflection. So that value is available in the data handbook. So that is to be used as equation number 11.5a. So and uh, a is the clearance, which is to be considered here as 25% of axial deflection y. So the next one is uh, spring index. Spring index is defined as the ratio of uh, diameter of the coil to the diameter of the wire. So usually this value is six if it is not given. And that value varies from uh, two to 12. And spring rate, that is the uh, stiffness of the spring. So which is defined as force required for the per unit deflection. So that is what uh, to be calculated as F naught is equal to F by Y. And this value, if it means same, if there are number of forces, say if there are two different forces are acting on the spring, say F1 by Y1, F2 by Y2, F3 by Y3, like that. So that is to be used. And after that, uh, the next term is uh, pitch. So pitch is defined as the axial distance between two adjacent coils. Axial distance between two adjacent coils. And this value is a standard equation here is having standard equation such as L0 minus 2D divided by I. So this is what the equation which is to be referred by using table number 11.4 of your data handbook. Next, uh, after this, we have to go for the spring materials. There are different spring materials that you just go through it. And uh, then the important derivation is there. So stresses in the helical spring or circular wire of circular wire so there are two kinds of uh, helical springs that we come across one is with respect to circular wire another one is made up of non-circular wire where here the cross section is either rectangle or square now here it is circular so there are different notations say d is mean diameter of the coil and uh, small d is diameter of the wire i is active number of coils or effective number of coils g is modulus of rigidity of the spring material f is the axial load acting on the spring Tau is the shear stress of the spring material. C is spring index, which is capital D by small d, and Y is axial deflection. So by considering these things, next we have to go for the particular sketch where the spring is represented here, and the axial load that is F is acting axially. So with respect to that, there are two kinds of stresses that are induced here. One is shear stress because of the twisting moment induced. And uh, with respect to that, there is a direct compression stress also that is induced here, so which is neglected. So uh, because of that force here of uh, torque is induced here, or the twisting moment is induced in the spring, so which is given by T is equal to F into D by 2. Capital D is mean diameter of the coil multiplied by F, that is F into radius, that is the torque. And uh, the next term that is to be considered here as torsional moment area or torsional moment equation is also given by by using pi by 16 into tau 1 into d cube that is torsion equation so since the torch or the torsional moment that is same in both the cases so that these two are equated hence we will be getting an equation tau 1 is equal to 8 fd divided by pi into d cube so this is what simplification of or equate uh, equating after equating these two equations fd by 2 equal to pi by 16 into tau 1 into d cube tau 1 is the stress of the spring material so after this we will be getting an equation for tau 1 which is stress produced uh, in a member so twisted by a couple of couple in a pure shear case so as i said there are two kinds of stresses they are induced direct stress shear stress as well as stress due to curvature 
so the direct shear stress that can be noted or calculated by using f divided by area f divided by area is pi by 4 d square d is small d is area of the uh, diameter of the wire so next uh, tau 2 equation that is obtained here tau 2 is equal to 4f divided by pi d square that is a simplification of this equation so these two shear stresses they are to be added to get the total or resultant shear stress that is due to twisting movement and because of the direct acting direct action of the force f so this uh, the after solving this equation we will be getting equation for tau as 8 fd divided by pi d cube into ks ks is 1 plus 1 divided by 2 c so which is called as shear stress factor so this shear stress factor that is to be considered here initially but uh, if you have to consider or we have to consider the effect of curvature also so by considering the effect of curvature uh, so we have to introduce a wall stress factor here so that is what k so the resulting equation of shear stress is 8 fd into k divided by pi d cube say that is equation number 11.1d of uh, page number 169 of data handbook and the data handbook which is preferred here is mahadevan mahadevan and balavir reddy so edition 4 so this is the equation of wall stress factor k is equal to 4c minus 1 divided by 4c minus 4 plus uh, 4.615 divided by c so this is what equation number 11.2a in the same page of that handbook so these are the representation of the stress distribution as applied to the spring wire diameter that is d so this is the effect of torsional shear stress and this is direct shear stress distribution and the next two equations of the sketches they are resulted uh, related to the resultant shear stresses and after this uh, we have to uh, uh, go for the derivation of deflection of the helical spring deflection of helical spring so related to this equation we have to use again the torsional equation itself t by j is equal to tau by r that is equal to g theta by l r is nothing but d by 2 itself so here t is shear stress that is f into d by 2 j is polar moment of inertia and we, are, we have to consider this the middle term that we have considered in the in the previous derivation shear stress equation now we have to consider g theta by l is equal to t by j so by using this relation so theta equation is derived here t by l t into l divided by gj so you have to substitute all the expansions say t is f into d by 2 and then uh, l is length of the wire which is capital l for our uh, particular rest of the calculations capital l is equal to pi into capital d into i capital d is mean diameter i is active number of turns and g is modulus of rigidity uh, mo g is modulus of rigidity of the spring material and j is polar moment of inertia which is given by pi by 32 into d raised to 4 so simplify this so you'll be getting the expression for angular deflection so angular deflection that is what theta if it is multiplied by the radius or mean radius of the spring that is capital d by 2 that gives us the axial deflection y so which is after simplification y is equal to 8 f d cube into i divided by g d raised to 4 r d raised to 4 into g so which is equation number 11.5a page number 170 of the data handbook and also we have got an another equation that is f naught is equal to f by y right so this is what the thing that you have to remember only f naught is equal to f by y because f value will be known and y value is calculated substitute and get the stiffness equation that's all so then we have to move on to the general design procedure this is what the actual required thing that is to be discussed and uh, the notes is also provided with you people just refer the notes also in the meantime so here the design procedure that includes around seven steps so this is the design procedure used for helical compression spring so helical compression spring either made of circular cross section or uh, rectangular cross section or non circular cross section so now we are dealing with the circular cross section the very first step here is to determine the diameter of the spring wire or the wire used to create or to make the spring so the first and foremost equation that we have to use here is shear stress equation which is given by 8 f d k divided by pi d cube say this is equation number 11.1 uh, d uh, page number 169 of the data handbook 
and uh, the value of k that is to be calculated by using the expansion 4c minus 1 divided by 4c minus 4 plus 0 0.615 divided by c so this is what equation number 11.2a of the data handbook available in page number 169 so what is k k is wall stress factor so that value is to be substituted here and also we have got another term that is capital d which is mean diameter of the coil so instead of using that mean diameter that can be expressed in terms of small d by using spring index equation spring index c is given by capital d by small d so this is available in page number 169 of the data handbook equation number 11.2 c so capital d is replaced by the product of c into d right suppose if c is not given in that case that c is to be assumed as 6 so that capital d is equal to 6 times d so you have to substitute all these values and you have to get the value of small d that is diameter of the spring wire so that is the very first step so once you get capital d uh, uh, spring wire diameter small d the second step is to go for the calculation of mean diameter of the coil so mean diameter of the coil that is calculated by using the same kind of equation that is spring index equation says capital c is equal to capital d by small d so mean diameter d is given by c into small d so now the outer diameter of the coil is d naught uh, so that is equal to d plus d and uh, inner diameter of the coil is given by di that is equal to capital d minus small d so by using this relation these things you have to get the dimensions of the spring and once you get these dimensions the next important thing that you have to go for the calculation of number of coils so number of coils i is calculated by using axial deflection itself axial deflection y is given by 8 fd cube into i divided by gd raised to 4 so by using equation number 11.5a which is we have derived earlier and uh, next uh, we have to go for or we have to simplify this as usually the axial deflection or the maximum permissible displacement or the deflection of the spring will be given so based upon that value you have to get the value of number of active turns i by solving this equation where g is modulus of rigidity of the material d is spring wire diameter capital d is mean coil diameter and f is the force acting on the spring so substituting all the values you have to get the value of number of active turns i so once you get i the next fourth step is to go for the calculation of free length so free length is given by this equation say l naught should be greater than or equal to i plus n i plus n is total number of turns required including additional turns say i is actual number of turns plus n n is additional number of turns and multiplied by d diameter of the wire so which is called a solid height plus y is the axial deflection plus a is the clearance 25 percent of the uh, y value n is to be referred from table number 4 11.4 uh, page number 189 so here you have to assume the square and ground ends uh, n is equal to 2 so by using or by completing this step the next step you have to go for the calculation of stiffness that is f naught f naught is given by f by y f force divided by axial displacement next thing that you have to go for the calculation of pitch pitch is the distance axial distance between two adjacent coils so this is standard equation l naught minus 2d divided by i so you can refer table number 11.4 to note this equation the next one is the total length of wire so length of wire that is uh, used in derivation also so capital l is equal to pi into d into i i dash i dash is actual number of coils or turns so which is given by i plus n so l is equal to pi d into i plus n i plus n is actual number of turns active number of turns plus additional number of turns so this is what the design procedure so once you use this design procedure so while solving problems all these seven steps that you have to carry out related to helical compression spring so the next uh, is problem one of the problem that i have to here say the very first problem say design a helical compression spring uh, that is to sustain an axial load of axial load of uh, three kilonewton so uh, f is three kilonewton is given so that is nothing but three into ten raised to 3 newton the deflection of the spring is also given here as 60 mm so y is equal to 60 mm 
the spring index is 6 that is also given so c value that is the notation used to indicate the spring index or spring rate which is given by which is given here as 6 which is given by capital d by small d ratio of the mean diameter to the wire diameter and uh, by using this relation you have to make or convert capital d in terms of small d as capital d is equal to 6 times d next uh, the shear stress is also given for the spring material that is 300 mpa which is nothing but 300 newton per mm square so in addition to that the modulus of rigidity of the spring wire or spring material is given as 81 mega pascal gpa so which is nothing but 81 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square so by using this information the very first step according to the general design procedure shear stress equation that we have to make use here to get the very first parameter that is diameter of the spring wire so use the shear stress expression by using equation number 11.1 d page number 169 of data handbook so in this equation you have to substitute the value of k which is wall stress factor given by this expression 4c minus 1 divided by 4c minus 4 plus 0.615 divided by c which is equation number 11.2 a of data handbook page number 169 and k value what you get here is 1.2525 after substituting the value of c as 6 here next you have to substitute the capital d as 6 times small d so the resulting equation is something like this so you have to get the solve this equation to get the value of d which is 13.8 mm you can keep 13.8 as it is or <coughs> you can select the next highest number or round off it to the next number that is 14 mm the next the second step is to go for the calculation of mean diameter of the coil so mean diameter of the coil that is in terms of c itself so that is c into d c is 6 d is 14 mm so that the value what you get here is eighty four mm that is capital d so once you get capital d value the next step is to go for the calculation of outer diameter of the coil that is d naught d plus d 98 mm and a di d minus d that is 70 mm d minus d that is 70 mm and uh, after that you have to go for third step that is number of coils active coils so here you have to make use of axial deflection y equation which is 11.5 a of data handbook available in page number 170 data handbook. so simplify this equation or manipulate this equation to get the equation for i I is number of turns y into g into d raised to 4 divided by 8 f d cube y is axial deflection given g is modulus of rigidity that is also given d is wire diameter calculated that is 14 raised to 3 uh, sorry 14 raised to 4 it is just make the correction and uh, 8 into 3 into 10 raised to 3 and uh, 84 raised to 3 so you just make the correction here this is 14 raised to 4 and i is equal to 13.212 that you get here so therefore i value is uh, equal to a round number because this is number of turns so that should not be in fraction so this is to be 14 turns and after that the free length of the wire or the spring that is to be calculated so free length is nothing but the length or height of the spring when it is unloaded so this equation is l is l naught is greater than or equal to i plus n into d plus y plus a so available in table 11.4 page number 189 and assume n is equal to 2 for square and round ends so l naught that value that you get here is greater than or equal to 299 so the next value that is to be calculated here is pitch so pitch value is given by this equation L naught minus 2 d divided by i. i is number of effective turns or active turns. L naught is free length and d is wire diameter. So that this equation gives a value of 19.36. And uh, after that, the stiffness f naught is to be calculated. f naught is equal to f by y that is equal to 50 newton per mm. And length of wire l that is the seventh and the last step l is equal to pi d into i dash i dash is actual number of turns i plus n it is so that the resulting value for capital l is 4222 millimeters that is nothing but four meters 
so this is what the one of the problem that is discussed on the helical spring so just make the correction this value is 14 raised to 4 and uh, after this uh, the second problem the say here instead of giving the force in this case the pressure value is given operating pressure and maximum pressure along with that maximum lift of the valve so this is the you have to carry out the design for design uh, of helical compression spring for a spring loaded safety valve for a spring loaded safety valve and uh, with respect to the values which are given below so here instead of giving the pressure force value is given sorry force instead of giving the force pressure value is given say operating pressure is 1 mpa and uh, maximum pressure is 1.1 mpa so that the values of uh, p1 and p2 p1 is 1 newton per mm square and p2 is 1.1 newton per mm square and the maximum lift is given as y dash so y dash is 6 mm and uh, <coughs> and the diameter of the valve seat that is also given here as uh, 100 mm so 100 mm is the diameter of valve seat so on which the spring is mounted and shear stress of 360 newton per mm square and g is 84 gpa that is 84 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square and along with that spring index is also given as c equal to 5.5 so after this uh, since the pressure value is to be converted into force as per our equations so therefore p is equal to force per unit area so force that is divided by area of wall seat here area of valve seat so p1 is equal to f1 by av and p2 is equal to f2 by av so that f1 is equal to p1 into av and f2 is equal to pressure into area of wall seat so area of valve is that is given by pi by 4 dv square dv is 100 mm that is given so that the area what you get is 7854 mm square so the minimum force f1 is 7854 p1 into av equation and the maximum force is f2 that is equal to p2 into area of wall that is 1.1 is the maximum pressure multiplied by 7854 is area of wall seat so the resulting value is 8639.39 or 38 that is f2 so once you get f2 value so since in the previous problem you have got only one f but here we have got f1 and f2 two values so with respect to that we have to make use of stiffness expression stiffness expression is something like this f1 by y1 is equal to f2 by y2 that is equal to f2 minus f1 divided by y2 minus y1 so f2 minus f1 divided by y2 minus y1 y2 minus y1 is nothing but difference between the initial and final compression or the final expansion you can say so f2 minus f1 divided by y dash y2 minus y1 is nothing but y dash so you have to make use of this expansion for the calculation of uh, unknown parameter which is that unknown parameter since the uh, always that is spring is to be designed for the maximum load and maximum deflection so maximum load is known here that is f2 f2 is 8639.38 newtons so y2 value that we have to get now so y2 value is unknown y1 is value is also unknown but y dash is given that is lift so what is the lift of the spring that is given that is initial and final compression Dif difference between those two values and so that the total deflection say we have to make use of this equation that is f2 by y2 it is equals to f2 minus f1 divided by y dash that is nothing but y2 minus y1 itself so f2 minus f1 divided by y dash so simplify this equation so that y2 is equal to y dash into f2 y dash into f2 divided by f2 minus f1 so this equation is there in data handbook page number 170 equation number 11.7 b <clears throat> so by using that equation you have to rearrange the terms so y2 is equal to 6 into all these things say y dash is 6 mm that is given f2 is calculated substitute f2 and f1 so that y2 value is 66 mm that you are getting now so once you get this 66 mm so the design is to be based on the maximum load and maximum deflection design of helical compression spring that is to be based on maximum load and maximum deflection so f2 is to be treated as f now onwards that is 8639.38 newton and y is to be treated as y2 value that is 66 mm not y dash so these are the two values that we have to consider for rest of the calculations now we have to repeat the similar steps what we did in the first problem so 
these are the substrates which are carried out here just to get the values of maximum force f as well as maximum deflection y so for that purpose you have to carry out uh, the substrates here conversion of pressure into force and then area of velocity uh, and after that uh, maximum deflection with the given lift value so by so getting these two values next uh, step one <coughs> as usual diameter of wire so shear stress is given by tau is equal to by using 11.1 d say similar to the previous problem so k is equal to 1.2785 by using wall stress factor equation 11.2 a equation and uh, capital d is replaced in terms of c into d that is 5.5 d so that uh, after solving this equation you will be getting the value of uh, d as 21 mm rounded value and after this you have to go for mean diameter of the coil that is d is equal to c into small d that is 115.5 mm outer diameter of the spring that is uh, capital d plus small d that is equal to d not that is equal to 136.5 u and a smaller uh, say that is inner diameter inside diameter of the spring coil is di d minus d is equal to 94.5 u mm then you have to go for the calculation of number of coils or number of turns so you have to make use of axial deflection equation that is maximum deflection y that is y to here so 8 fd cube into i divided by gd raised to 4 so here you will be having i equation that is manipulation of uh, manipulation of this equation that is rearranging the terms keeping i on one side so that y into g into d raised to 4 divided by 8 fd cube so that the answer for number of active coils that is 11 10.12 you get uh, that should be rounded off and then free length equation free length is given by l naught is greater than or equal to i plus n into d plus y plus a y is 25 percent of uh, uh, sorry a is 25 percent of y that is 16.5 y is axial deflection that is given calculated 66 mm n is equal to 2 that is assumed by referring table number 11.4 and l naught that value you get here 355.8 so that l naught must be greater than or equal to this value so you can write in the next line as l naught is equal to 360 mm also next pitch value so pitch value is given by l naught minus 2d divided by i so this is equal to uh, 28.36 28.36 mm and then stiffness equation f naught is equal to f y y so this value is equal to 130.9 newton per mm square next length of wire l is equal to pi d into i dash so pi d into bracket i plus n uh, is equal to 4717 mm millimeters so there is a similar problem which is problem number three here f1 and f2 both are given so you just refer it along with the lift of the wall that is y dash so f1 is 45 newton and f2 is 55 newton just proceed with the calculation of y2 first and then all the seven steps so this is what the thing that is to be discussed that i want to discuss today so anything that is to be discussed